Well, hello everyone. My name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish boat here. And I do this on nights and weekends in my spare time. It's not my profession. It's just um, something I like to do. And if you were with me on the last episode, you saw me build these and um, my attempt didn't really work. Um, the idea was good, but it just didn't work. I took, when I welded this 316 stainless steel, it just warped in this direction. And um, I decided not to try to fix it. I just chopped it up as a learning experience and um, moved on. Um, what these are is actually drain channels. If you didn't see that episode, I call them drain channels. They just catch the water that comes off the hatches and um, directs the water to the drains that are permanently attached to the decking here and then eventually overboard. This is the um, my next attempt. And this will be my final attempt because <laughs> I'm going to use these. Um, these are built out of a combination of Kume plywood, half inch marine grade, and it was all scraps that I had off other things I built on the boat. So I didn't have to buy it. Um, the ends are stainless steel 3 16 tube, square tube, same as what I used here. And um, the whole thing's uh, sheathed in fiberglass, which um, was not an easy task, as you'll see in the video. So this wasn't any easier to build than those. Those were actually easier to build, although I built them terrible. <laughs> um, these were just hard to build, <laughs> as you'll see. But these do fit really nicely in here now. Um, they're not totally fitted in here, but they fit good. And um, I like the way they look. Um, they kind of match everything else actually a little bit better. I still have to paint them and fit them, but that's for another day. Um, the advantage of these, I'll just mention quickly, these are light, super lightweight. And um, probably all three of these weigh about as much as one of these. These are heavy. Um, but these aren't quite as strong, a little more fragile with these ends coming out here. But I'll just um, have to support these a little bit different with uh, maybe a little bit beefier bracket and support them from underneath, which I'll talk about in the video, I think. But anyways, um, I guess there's nothing more to talk about, and I'll just um, show you how he built these.
Okay, well, it's the next morning and uh, everything appears to be trying good. Well, I just pulled this longer one off. I just wanted to show you how the bottom looked before I do any sanding later on. So it looks like it filled everything pretty good. Okay, so before I keep going with these, I just wanted to show you guys how I put a little piece of uh, two inch wide, six ounce fiberglass tape on the end of each of these channel pieces just to cover up this end grain of the plywood here. Um, that has been on there for a couple of days, but I just haven't had time to get around to trimming it off and do anything more with it. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning. pieces of metal I'm putting in, stainless. It's all scored up on the back here. Did with my Dremel and a little diamond kind of a bit on there. So I did it to all of them. They're all ready to go. fitting the channels in their openings. Now I had a bit of an issue with my camera when I was finishing these off, so I didn't film putting in the fillet here. This is um, 610 West Systems fillet. Same thing I've done in all these little channels and all in a lot of places where I was putting fillets in, really small ones. I still have to sand it and everything, but it's in there. Now today's task is to um, cut this existing channel here um, so this whole thing will drop down in, so I have to mark around that stainless steel piece and drop it down. Yeah, because this, this and this have to be level, so it'll drop down in there. And then I want to mark the end of this stainless here where I have to trim it off because it's too long. Unfortunately, this doesn't cut deep enough, <laughs> and this is too wide without screwing it up, so I'm going to have to cut down and then go more in.
Now I'm gonna have to dial all this stuff in in the spring. This is as far as I can go right now. I have to get this all fiberglass to get the right height on it. Um, I'm gonna trim, I am gonna trim this stainless steel piece because the drip edge has to go around this corner. So it would hit this. So I'm gonna have to trim that off, um, you know, before I fiberglass it probably. But you get the idea. Um, that's how it's gonna be. Now, the way this channel here is not going to be sitting on this little piece of stainless steel. That piece will rip right off, um, even though I'm going to fiberglass over it. Uh, all the weight's going to be kind of carried right down on this bottom part. So there'll be a bracket that comes, that's bolted on here, and this thing sits down on it, and it'll be bolted to the bracket somehow. I haven't designed it yet. But the weight will be on on the bracket, not on, not on this thing. And uh, so, that's the idea. Alright, so I'm trimming off these stainless steel extensions that I put on here with epoxy. And my main concern with trimming these was uh, generating too much heat and releasing the epoxy or semi-releasing the epoxy. So my first attempts, I tried using my Dremel, thinking because it was smaller uh, that it wouldn't generate as much heat. And I used the, um, it's the cutoff wheel they have. And um, this is the system you used to put it on. There's a grinding wheel on there now. But, um, I found that it generated a lot of heat and actually didn't cut the metal. <laughs> um, a, a real lot of heat. So I, I went away from that. Uh, and the other thing with, I find with these when I use them, and I don't use them very often, um, is that this new system they have, which they released, I don't know when they released it, but they used to have just a screw holding these kind of things on. But that maybe that wasn't safe or something, I don't know. But they had this system here with this quick release. And it works great for changing things, but it doesn't... I mean, the wheels, in my opinion, float too much. I don't know if it's focusing on this wheel, but um, even if it's not, you can probably still see. It can float around. So the accuracy uh, for doing certain things, um, I don't think is that great. So I tend not to use them. It's probably good for small things, which is a Dremel was really meant for anyways. But for this, it just doesn't work all around. So I, I kind of got rid of that idea. And I just went with my grinder with my regular cutoff disc on the wheel on there. And that worked awesome. Uh, didn't generate much heat because it caught the thing like instantly. And I had a wet um, rag hand hand just to hold it on there afterwards just to cool it down if it did generate the heat. And uh, just as a precaution. Now I know there's a couple other things I probably could have done too uh, that I've seen in the automotive kind of world where they're working on body, sheet, mo uh, sheet metal or body work, which is very thin, uh, where they put some sort of clay type material on there as a heat sink, or they blow compressed air on there to kind of cool it down. This is more after welding. But um, I didn't have to resort to any of that. This, this worked fine, didn't bother anything. It's still on there. It, it worked out great. So now I'm gonna cut the rest of these and I'll show you um, cutting the other end of this one. People, it is the next day, and um, you didn't see the final <laughs> putting on this thing. I turned off the camera after a while because I knew it was just going to take forever for me to try to get this thing to stick. And uh, in the end, it wasn't a total failure, but it was not a success either. And um, I can work with it, but um, it's going to take a lot more work. So I'm ready to start back in on these drain channels. Now, these didn't go well for me, putting this fiberglass on here. Um, as you're watching in this video, um, these have not been easy to do. <laughs> I, 
I can't believe it. I, just everything I do on these just doesn't seem to work for me. But anyways, um, I did struggle with this fiberglass. It did not want to make six bends in a two inch um, distance, which uh, I can understand. <laughs> it's a little bit heavier fiberglass than I should have used. Uh, I thought it was a six ounce, but it actually was a nine ounce. And it just didn't want to do the bends. So what that means is I got to do some messing around and get this thing right. It mostly on the top here, it actually um, it just bubbled up. I, as much as I pressed it down, it just wanted to rise up. So it's not even contacting the plywood in a lot of places. But on the ends here, well, when I was letting it dry, almost when it was almost completely dry, it was still bubbled up. And so what I did was I just took some plastic and clamped it on here really tight and it really actually worked really nice and it pushed it right down to the plywood but it's just on the last inch or so of each one and um, what that tells me is that this probably would have been a great thing to do with like a vacuum bagging I've never done vacuum bagging but um, this would have been a great candidate for that because I think this would have just came out perfect doing it that way but that's water under the bridge now, under the bridge now, as they say. And now I have to just fix what I have messed up. So what I'm going to do is just grind, first off, just grind these top edges off. Uh, because that's where most of the bubbling is. There's a little bit on the sides here near the top as well. Um, and I'll just grind those little areas out. But mainly to get the top done and then put a strip of fiberglass on there. And don't try to bend it over the corners or anything. Just get it on there. Let it try and then blend it in after it's all done. So I'm gonna do that on all of these. I'm not so worried about the bottom fiberglass because it's just this one bend here to do on each corner and it's not gonna go up, probably only gonna go up about half, halfway. Um, so I'm not too worried about that piece, but I just gotta get all this stuff cleaned up and keep moving on this. Uh, the ends here are looking good though, I have to say. I gotta take the positives out of this and um, the stainless steel part looks pretty good, so. So sanding this, I'm realizing how bumpy and crappy this actually came out. Uh, yeah, not, not very good at all. This is going to take quite a while to sand. There's a lot of pits and things in here and that I'm going to have to fill. And uh, just the fiberglass on the sides of this is really ripply. Like, this really just didn't come out great. Uh, once again, just this project of, of doing these is just not working out, no matter what I do. But the main thing I'm, I'm trying to do, actually, is the tops here and any bubbles up near the top on this side here, too. But I just wanted to clean up the bottom. That's fine. Uh, but um, the other sides are not looking great. And um, I'll find out how this top is when I get going with this. But... I'm just going to continue to sand all this down, and um, I'll show you how it looks when I'm all done. All right, a quick update before I continue on. Now, I ended up sanding all the fiberglass off the top. It was so bad, and it was just easier to sand it all off, so we're back down to plywood there. Um, the sides were very wavy, and um, I didn't really pay enough attention doing the sides when I put it on because I was so worried about the crappy job I was doing up here. So. Mm -hmm. Those have a lot of pits, and it, they had to be sanded a lot, so that's not very good either. The only good part of it was I started sanding the inside of the channel here by hand with some 80 grit, and that looks really good. I didn't hardly dig into the fiberglass. It's still kind of rough, so I want it, and um, that looks really good. So I think sanding the channel is going to come out nice on all the pieces. So my original plan was to just fiberglass the top here, but after doing sanding and looking at this i think i'm going to flip it on its side like that and just run the tape hang it off the edge here run it around and um, go at least halfway on the back here sand all that down flip it over and do the same here and that'll make it all be covered and i'll be able to get the sides nicer and still do the tops and not really affect hopefully the channel too much by doing that okay a quick update now I'm not really filming fiberglassing these pieces, but 
2022 so far has been <laughs> a lot of setbacks because things just aren't working out. Um, not just on these, but on other stuff I'm working on too for the boat. But uh, the plan here was to uh, have this fiberglass come over this edge, cover the lip here, roll it over, cover that, this edge right here, because I sanded it all off and had to recover it. And then just come down around the back about halfway and then sand the bottom and, and flip it over and do it again. And I would be done with all the fiberglassing. But the uh, fiberglass had other ideas. It didn't want to stick on this side. It didn't want to make this tight bend. It was too heavy of a, of a weight fiberglass, I guess. And uh, it just kept popping up. So I had to think on the fly and just uh, pull it over this way more, get it close to the edge and just let it do its, what it wanted to do. It was going around this corner nicely because it's a, it's a larger radius and just bring it down as far as I could down here um, before it started going over the other way. And that's, so that's what I did, I just dragged it. I just did this one first and then I didn't even attempt to do it the other way on those. I just did it the same way as this. And now it's been drying for a day and um, I'm ready to sand it and move on. So, <clears throat> I mean, it came out good, but it's gonna add a whole nother step because, um, let me show you on these, I'm still gonna have to cut this off up here. Um, I have to still fiberglass this portion here. I don't need as wide of a piece, obviously. Um, so I'll just go over the edge and maybe go halfway down, probably use a three inch wide piece. And then I still have to deal with the tops of these, which was the whole idea in the first place. I mean, <laughs> it's just, I'm learning a lot about this kind of fiberglass. It doesn't like to do what I want it to do, and it's gonna do what it wants to do. So in hindsight, I guess I really should have just used the cloth that I always used, like I used for the engine hatches here. And you can see how tight of a corner this stuff can do with no problem. It's just a little more epoxy over the top to get it, to give you something to sand to. But I'm gonna have to put that extra epoxy on over here anyway, so. I mean, yeah, I tried it, but you know, I probably just sort of stuck with what works and what I've always done everywhere else. But it's, uh, it's too late now. <laughs> I'm going down this path, so I have to stick to it. So this is not ideal because I'm just gonna have to put a little strip on the top here and um and live with it and i have to do a strip on both of these at the same time so i'm not going to film any of that but i just wanted to show you guys i'm just you know nothing goes right all the time and a lot of times it goes wrong but um you just have to deal with it and just keep on moving and that's going to be extra time spent sanding just what i wanted to do and um yeah so there that's where we're at Okay, so about three hours later, I've got the three inch piece of fiberglass on the opposite side of these. It took me about a half hour to sand each one of the pieces down after the four inch, all that globby, drippy stuff that was on there when I showed you before. Um, and I didn't think that was that bad actually. Um, and then I put the three inch on. You can see the three inch only goes about halfway down the bottom, which is on the side now, but that'll be the bottom. And um, I probably used about half the amount of epoxy, uh, just because the first time I used way too much epoxy to put this fiberglass on. Um, and it was all blobbing, and I think the fiberglass might have been floating a little bit here and there, but anyways, I used a lot less this time. And um, you can see the weave, but I'm not too worried about that because that I will, uh, once this dries a little bit, I'll just put a couple coats of epoxy on it give me something to actually sand so I'm not sanding into the weave when I sand this stuff flat and for paint. So here we are. Got the heaters off right now. I got to put them back on so this stuff will dry but I just wanted to have it a little bit quieter when I um, showed you guys this. So I'm good. I had a little bit better attitude today than yesterday. Things went a lot better today. Um, which is normally the case on the second time around when you know what you're in for. And um, yeah, just got it done. So uh, next time I'll be working on these, I'll be doing the top edge and um, fiberglassing that. 
All right, so while you guys weren't watching, I got a little work done on these train channels here, and I'll bring you in and um, show you uh, where they're at. So here's one of the smaller pieces, and um, what I did, I'll flip it over this way. I did get this side fiberglassed up to about here. I've sanded it down and kind of blended it in. Needs a little more work, but um, looks pretty good. So all these three sides here are fiberglass and sanded. And then I wanted to finish off by fiberglassing the tops here. It was the only surface that hasn't been fiberglassed yet. Or <laughs> it was fiberglass. I sanded it off. I had to redo it. But anyway, so I just took a piece of three inch wide tape that I had and just put it on that way. I was going to split it up and do individual pieces, but I thought if I did it this way, I wouldn't get drips down into the channel, which I've already sanded the channel a few times. I really didn't feel like doing it again. And um, I think it worked pretty good. I don't know. I'll go down here and you can see down there. And uh, there's no drips down in there. So that goal was met. Um, so now today I'm going to trim this off and sand it up. And um, what I'd like to do is get these epoxy, this whole top area, so I can blend it all in. And then that'll be it, it'll be done. All right, three coats of dried epoxy on all of these. You can see how it smoothed everything out nice, just self-leveled itself. And um, I'm gonna go over these now with a Scotch-Brite pad and some water to get rid of the amine blush that's on there. And I also have to uh, still do the bottoms with a couple coats. I think uh, I'm just gonna sand the drips on these edges and uh, then do two quick coats on the bottom and let that dry before I sand the whole thing. And uh, that'll be it. So uh, next time, probably see these. I'll probably show them after I sand them and then I'll just bring them to the boat and they'll just wait their turn to be um, fitted in. I'm epoxying the bottom of these. I had the camera out for other things so I figured I might as well show you. That's the first coat. I'll do another one and then we'll be done with that. All right, well, it is February 12th and it's about 60 degrees out today. This is a record temperature. And we're gonna wrap up this uh, video here with, uh, I'm just showing you the pieces that I built, the channels here, and how they're gonna fit in. There's the two small ones, everything's been sanded. I'm over here actually working on something else, but I'm just ending this video here by looking at this stuff. And look at the bees are even, bees are even out today. <laughs> It's February. It's February and he's flying around. Get away from me. All right, well, the bee left and um, hopefully he gets in a nice warm hive for tonight and uh, survives the rest of the winter. But um, here's the main piece that goes in the uh, engine hatch area. And it's kind of windy outside, so there may be some background noise. Um, and I just have it sitting here now, but what I did uh, not too long ago, I um, cut these notches out of the actual drain channel on both sides and um, basically this thing just drops in there sorry for the camera and um, and that's how it works now I'm gonna have to fine-tune all of this but the idea which I can't do now because it's not consistently warm enough is um, I'm gonna cut this large enough that I can fill this with a pot thickened epoxy and tape all this up so this doesn't stick and then just drop this in here and it will form right to this channel with the epoxy on both sides. And um, that's how it'll be a really nice fit in the end and it'll protect all the ends here. But we'll get into that when that actually happens. To seal it, I'll probably, and this is just my thought right now and you can comment on it, um, probably just gonna put some, uh, just a little strip of butyl tape on there. And then when I screw it down or bolt it down, um, it'll just ooze out and I'll just clean it up and anytime I take it out I'll just redo it. That's going to be it for um, these channels for now. Well that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you got some enjoyment out of that. Now before I uh, totally sign off here um, for this video um, I'm just going to let you know that I'm probably not going to have another video released until May. Uh, the reason I'm not going to do that is um, between these drain channels, which took me forever to do, and gave me fits, and a bunch of other stuff that I was working on over the winter for the boat, the same issues. I have issues with these engine hatches over here now for some reason. Um, 
and stuff I've been working on in my cars didn't go right. So um, I need to work on a project that is kind of brainless because I'm kind of fried and trying to figure things out and work on projects that I have to actually think. So I think the best project to work on here on the boat for that for the next month and a half is going to be grinding the fiberglass here in the cockpit. I want to grind all the fiberglass here, um, similar to what I did in the in, in the uh, fuel tank areas back here. Grind it all. I want to eventually put a nice layer of fiberglass on everything. I also have to remove the engine beds over here, so I don't know what I'm going to find when I do that. But um, with that, I'm, I don't have a lot of time each day to, to work on the boat, um, I'm finding lately. So when I'm over here, I want to have it be totally productive 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 time so that means I'm I wasn't going to film it anyways but I'm not going to film all the grinding stuff I'll film the engine bed removal and things I haven't filmed before but the major part of it I'm not going to be filming anything I just want to leave my house with a bottle of water in my hand unzip this door here work for a half hour 45 minutes whatever I have zip it up and leave I don't want to mess with anything else I just want to get all 100% production done. So that's what I'm planning on doing for the next month and a half. I want to get it done before it gets too warm because I don't want to be doing that. Um, grinding a fiberglass when it's hot out. I've done that before. It's not fun. The job is dreadful as it is. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing. So hopefully um, I get it done sooner than then, but um, that's the time I'm going to leave myself to do it. Well, once I do finish it, then I'll be back on the production of videos and things. Um, you guys are actually caught up anyways. I don't really have anything to put together in a video. Everything I've worked on in the winter, I've had a few winter projects I worked on. None of them are far enough along to actually put into a video. So um, I don't have anything anyways <laughs> to put out right now. So instead of just trying to rush some little thing just to get it out on YouTube, I'd rather do something productive that's going to help me uh, over the rest of the summer. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So uh, thank you everybody for following along and uh, even if you're just watching one video here and there or just one video in general, uh, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you in the next video and um, until then everybody take care. <laughs>